G'day Tubers, how are we people? Uh, thank you to my subscribers and my viewers and everyone else. I hope you don't have the Chinese virus. Yes, I call it the Chinese virus because that's exactly what it is. Didn't come from Australia and I'm tipping it didn't come from anywhere else. But anyway, uh, that's maybe for a segment for my successful Australian introductions. Hint, hint, hint. Uh, we're not PC here, so we sort of say what we want to say anyway. And if that gets me uh, in trouble, well, so be it. Well, we're continuing with the restoration of the Just About Perfect or the J.A. Prestwich Type 2A. Um, it's coming along nicely, guys. I've got a little bit of, as I say, a little bit of an update for you here. So let's get right into this. Well, guys, I tell you what, I don't get it right too often, but um, I'm pretty impressed. I told you I got one of those Eastwood home powder coating kits. Well, I've just had my first try. Uh, it's just gloss black, and I tell you what, I'm pretty happy with the results. Like, I've got to be the world's worst spray painter. and Not that it's really spray paint, but, um, yeah, I'm... I'm couldn't be happier with the way they've come up. Absolutely brilliant. The, um, learnt a few tricks, but, uh, yeah, just an amazing finish. Obviously, the more prep work you put in, the better the result you're going to get. But, um, yeah, couldn't be happier with that. I mean, the little, uh, little engine breather for the just about perfect, you know, with the polished parts on it, looks good. I even got some of that high temperature masking tape to uh, mask off the back of it where the gasket goes. Um, yeah, it's a little bit thin there, but um, looks really, really good. But yeah, obviously the better the prep, the uh, the better the result. Um, see, there was a little bit of rust pits in some of these. I don't know if you can get a, um, like a, a an undercoat that's sort of high fill, you know what I mean? That'll uh, fill up some of these little little divots and that because I know you can't use body filler because it's not electrically conductive but um, yeah nonetheless we've had a go to go at powder coat near the petrol tank brackets um, yeah absolutely amazing I mean you, you just you almost swear they were brand new so yeah that's powder coating for you so now that I've sort of got had a little bit of a go of it next time I'm doing some I'll uh, I'll show you the setup and uh, yeah, go into a little bit more detail. A little bit more preparation work on the JAP tubers. Um, just cleaning up the petrol tank. And got some of this special uh, uh, body filler or bog or bloody bondo, whatever bloody people want to call it. Um, it's high temperature and electrically conductive which makes it fine for powder coating so we've cleaned up the tank got rid of all the dents out of it also this uh the shroud or cowling uh got that looking pretty good so these are ready to powder coat this is the stuff it's from poland apparently it's um what is the brand that's the brand there troton um, supposed to be really good stuff apparently I can't read the instructions number one it's not in English and number two uh, it's too bloody small <laughs> so, but anyway no I think it's just a normal 50 to 1 and uh, normal cure time and that sort of thing but um, yeah it looks good guys this is the air cleaner element um, it's pretty crappy I mean, it's not, it's not bad, but it's just grubby and grimy. I'm either doing the right thing or the wrong thing. I'm gonna try this with a little bit of chemical in the ultrasonic cleaner and see what happens. I'm either gonna fix it or destroy it. Let's see. Well, there it is, tubers. We're gonna try this, see what happens. Um, got that, turned it up to 50C. We got that warming up, 30 minutes. Remember to read the instructions. Admonition. I don't know what admonition means, but there it is. Um, let's turn him on and uh, see what happens. Well, that's after half an hour, guys. Um, still a bit of rust stain and that in it. It hasn't fallen to bits. 
uh, still a bit, um, yeah, a little bit sore, not rusty, just like it's a stain, uh, a couple of spots. Yeah, we'll give it another half an hour. Let it, let the bloody ultrasonic cleaner cool down just a little bit. Um, and then we'll give it another half an hour and see what happens. It's sort of looking a little bit cleaner. The water's dirty, if nothing else. Yeah, we'll give it another half an hour. Well, tubers, we're just about there. Um, cleaning up all these parts. We've been busy with the powder coating, as you can see. Some parts come up a bit better than others. Um, but that's just me. I don't know what I'm doing, but I will learn. Um, yeah, it's it come, up, come up nice. The... Uh, the powder coating seems to be working a treat. I've done the block. Um, come up pretty good actually. I mean considering it's cast iron and it's a bit porous. Not porous but you know it's sort of rough finish. It doesn't look too bad. A lot of time and effort masking it off and all of that. Um, but yeah so that came up nice. You've seen the other bits. So they're all done. The air cleaner came up a treat. I'll just take it out of the sun. That came up a treat. That's all been powder coated. Um, cleaned up, the nuts and bolts blacked and all of that. So that looks pretty good. Uh, this tube, as you know, is gonna be a bit of a problem. Gonna have to try and get onto JAP if, they, if there's anyone still dealing in them and try and get one of them. As you know, I mentioned it the other day. Most of the nuts and bolts are done. Uh, just got, as I say, we're just waiting on the paint for um, the cowling and the petrol tank. Uh, rubbed all them back and put special body filler in them and that. We'll sandblast the flywheel. I haven't done that yet. And these bits, uh, I shall clean up as she goes back together. So. We are getting there guys, it's um, you know, it's starting to look pretty good. It should be a nice little engine when it's done. It's um, you know, sort of black with a few brass highlights and that, and um, you know, should look all right. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, it should look pretty good. I know the sun's in this actually, that's why it's probably not looking too good. Yeah, anyway, it is what it is, we'll keep going. Even cleaned up the um, the petrol cap and put a new bit of cork in it and that. So yeah, all right. We'll talk soon, guys. Start reassembly of the just about perfect uh, Type Two blocks, all done and painted, as I mentioned. Um, as I said in an earlier video, unusual little designs in this engine. Now, don't know how clear you can see that, but that is actually rifling in that bore. Now, obviously, that's to bring oil up to the uh, to the rings and the piston and that sort of thing. I've just I've never seen that done before. If you also look further down too, you'll see two little holes coming in the side of the cylinder. They actually marry up to these holes. Uh, that one's the main hold down bolt for the cam, and that one's for the rocker arms. But they actually protrude right through into the cylinder. Obviously, they um, uh, they don't go in the area of the stroke of the piston. But, uh, another unusual thing: no seals in this engine. It's got the gaskets and all that sort of thing, obviously. But like where the uh, the main one of the main bearings go on the crank, no seal there whatsoever. Um, strange little design cues on this. It's um, yeah. It's certainly different. I hope it doesn't leak when we, when we finish it. But um, yeah, so no seals. Strange little, as I say, strange little design. But uh, we'll start by um, putting the valves back in. These have all been cleaned up. Now the seat on that exhaust one, that's the intake, sorry. The seat on that exhaust, that is as good as I can get it without grinding. It's lapped in. There's just one or two little pits on it, but not on the, not really on the seat surface. So I think it'll be all right. That would, that valve was actually stuck open, but it's it's lapped right in. It should be okay. It's this engine's not going to be a working engine. It'll just run um, as a hobby. It won't be doing any hard work. Ah, that's the valve seat there. That's the intake. 
I just relieved them a little bit. Just um, there were some rough castings in there. I've just relieved them a tiny little bit with the Dremel. Um, it's not hardly a port and polish job or anything like that, but um, just help it flow a little bit better for what it is. Uh, but yeah, all right, we'll bung the valves in anyway. I'll have to stop this and restart it because uh, I'm doing it with a mobile phone, as you can probably tell, and I can't hold the phone and install the valve. So we'll be back in a minute. Lots of valves in, guys. Pretty straightforward. It's just a little... Um, I don't know if you can make it out there. It's just a little pin that uh, sits above the spring retainer there, so it can't come out. It's in a little slot. They went in, you know, very easy. They're not hard. It's only a very light spring. Just lubed up the valve stems with a bit of uh, assembly lube from CRC with molly in it. So um, just stuff, as it says, it's basically good for cranks, cams, gears, bearings, valve stems, so on and so on. I don't think I'd put it on piston rings and that sort of thing. I don't suppose it'd hurt. Um, I've always been told to use oil on rings and that, but um, yeah, anyway, we'll put it together with this because uh, there's no guarantee of uh, full oil pressure on startup, obviously. So, and that's if, of course, this thing even runs by some miracle. But uh, yeah, we'll continue. Next part to go in, guys, is the uh, crankshaft. Um, once again, it all checks out beautifully. Just a slight little rub on the uh, big end journal, but nothing to worry about. That's actually the what activates the governor as the crank spins harder. Those counterweights throw out and throw out that bushing, which in turn pushes on this arm, which is in turn connected to the throttle on the carburetor. So, um, yeah, interesting little setup. Once again, nothing highly unusual. Bearings are all good. As I say, this motor's done very little or no work at all. Someone's been at it. That's probably from the factory. I'd suggest that's just um, balancing marks where they've just machined it to balance it at the time. Um, I'm only, only guessing. I don't know that for a fact, but it sure looks the case. But um, crank checks out all right. So we'll put that in and uh, we'll be back. Crankshaft's installed. Uh, next thing will be the fancy little rocker arm going in. So um, yeah, it's piece by piece it'll go. Well, here's the camshaft, guys, ready to go in. See that little arrow on that tooth appears to line up with that uh, dot there on top of the crank. So, crank's on top dead centre. So, if I line those two up, uh, that should be on the firing stroke. There's the cam. As I say, just one lobe. Um, we'll put some of that molly on it. But, uh, yeah, that's ready to go in. The rocker assembly's in. As you can see, it's just one bolt uh, supporting the two. But, uh, yeah, we'll bang the cam in, see what it looks like. Well, timing appears to be okay, people. If we do one turn on the crank, that brings us to a bottom dead centre. And as you can see, the exhaust has just closed and the inlet's just open. And if we go around another full turn, brings on the crank, brings it back to the top and we're lined up so yeah it should be all right. Tell you what there's not much tension in the springs they're very soft but I think that's just the way they are very soft but yeah we'll see what happens. Right our tubers we're just about to put the piston in um, always when you install rings or put rings in see the gap see how the gaps are staggered well with three rings they should be about 120 degrees apart don't put them all in line and uh, yeah just to check the top for any marks you'll see in this case it's got a little F that goes towards the flywheel and when you put the uh, bottom bearing cap on you'll see there's a six and this one's got a six as well so there we go or a nine depends on which way you look at it also how this engine picks up the oil uh it's through splash but it's also through sort of a little induction sort of system 
see how that little pickup tube's on an angle. As the engine rotates, it dips into a sump. There we go. Dips into a sump like so, and that forces the oil up through the passage and into the uh, big end bearing. So yeah, it's an interesting little design. I mean, it's nothing new about splash feed and that sort of thing. But um, the only other unfortunate thing is uh, my ring compressor doesn't go this small, so I'm gonna have to do this the old reliable way. And um, sit that in like so. And just try and gently push the rings in as you push the piston down. So yeah, a little bit fiddly. I'll need both hands, so we'll see what happens. Well guys, the piston went in absolutely beautifully. Just a gentle push and push the rings in. But uh, that's turning around quite free. A little bit of resistance, obviously, but um, you know, not a whole heap. Just got to watch on, uh, on these, or on most engines, there's all, when you do up the, uh, the big end cap, uh, just make sure that they're done down to the correct tension and that the cap's on the right way, in this case it is. I've also put split pins through the holes. Uh, make sure you trim them off because as the crank actually turns, if you left them long, as you could see, they'd interfere. So you don't want bits of metal floating around your brand new engine. So, um, yeah, that was easy enough anyway. This is what I was talking about, the oil pickup, guys. As you can see here, see there's a slight angle on that. So if you imagine as that turns in a clockwise direction, that's going to dip in to this little piece here, which is like a little sump. And that actually fits up in there like that. And as it goes past the oil, it tends to pick it up and force it into that main bearing. So, yeah, good little idea, that. And of course, you probably get a bit of splash on the other components just to, uh, to keep them lubricated. So, yeah, always make, pay attention. Like, if you had that the wrong way, um, you'd probably end up with no oil pressure on the crank, and the results would be obvious. Well, tubers starting to go back together now. Uh, oil fillers in. Breaker plates on, uh, timed hopefully. There is a timing adjustment there. And also the uh, points have been adjusted. 20, 20 thou, as you can see there. That little second screw that in, is in the elongated hole, as you turn that, it's on an eccentric. And that helps you adjust the, uh, adjust the gap when you loosen off the bigger screw. Um, yeah, starting to go back together now. We have, we've got spark. So that's a good sign. So we shall see. Uh, the governor's back on. Um, no idea about the settings at this stage. I suppose we'll just wing it and see what happens. That's the shaft that actually goes through and uh, gets moved by the centrifugal weights on the crankshaft. So yeah, I guess as it pushes it, it backs off the throttle or increases the throttle, whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, don't know about the settings yet. We'll see with that. Well, the carby's back on tubers. Um, just basic adjustments. That's a mixture adjustment. Easiest place to start. Screw it all the way in. Not super tight. You can damage the seat. And uh, once, it's, once it's bottom, turn it out one and a half turns. That's usually a good starting point. Um, Little governor's hooked up. Um, so as I say, we've got to sort of run it to set that properly. But that's all looking pretty good. We're just about ready to um, bang the cylinder head on, actually, and the flywheel. So it's starting to look like an engine again. Well, tube is the basic engine's just about done. Uh, just got to paint the, uh, the shroud and all that sort of thing, but... Uh, yeah, coming up pretty nice. It's, um, cylinder head went on nicely, all of that, so that's pretty good. Uh, we'll buy a new spark plug in it. That's the original out of it. Uh, Champion L10, I think it is. Um, it was actually working, but we'll put a new one in. The NGK equivalent is a, uh, if my eyes don't deceive me, a B6HS. Champions are fine. But, I've, oops, there we go. I've always found the um, P6 
porcelain to be weak and they have a thread all of their own, I reckon. That's only my opinion. Um, I've always tried to avoid champions where possible. But nonetheless, it's a it's probably a bloody 60 or 70 year old plug and it still works. So, yeah, just put a little bit of grease on the threads and um, just because of steel and aluminium and um, bung him in. Always thread them by hand as far as they'll go, especially with aluminium heads because um, they're bloody easy to strip out. So that's about it. And um, oh, we appear to have good compression. So that's another bonus. So um, yeah, we'll see what happens. G'day tubers. Well, we've been doing a little bit of powder coating. Um, this is the cowling, whatever you want to call it. It didn't come up too bad and not too good. Um, some spots, I don't know what happened there. I was very careful to rub it right back, uh, degrease it and all of that, you know, with a uh, prep sole and that before I painted it. So it's a bit scrappy there, it's a bit scrappy there. And I'm a little bit thin up here, but I mean, I can live with that. Um, it's first try. Um, if it really worries anyone, well, that's their problem. A little bit thin there too. Now, I didn't have much luck with the body filler. Um, I've since learnt a lot of stuff. So uh, next time or next person that does this will uh, clean that up. I'm sure it's down the bottom. Once again, I'm not too stressed. It is a first try. Um, put the reproduction sticker on, so that's all right. Um, put a new grommet in there for the spark plug wire. We're just about to put this on and uh, see how it looks. Well, people, this is my first try at um, this sort of thing. I mean, I've done hundreds of engines over the years as a mechanic, but um, never really put them back together this way. It's uh, basically finished the little JAP Type 2. A couple of things still outstanding. The rubber tube, as you know, has to be replaced. I've got to try and find one of them somewhere. Uh, what else have we got? The muffler's got to be painted. I have no high temperature uh, paint at the moment. So as soon as the shop's open, I shall go and get a can and give that a coat of um, VHT or whatever. Um, other than that, it should be pretty right. Paint's a little bit thin there, but it is a learning curve. I am no master at painting or uh, powder coating or anything like that. But I tell you what, it's just about ready to um, fill it up with oil, put a bit of juice in it and see if it'll actually go. Um, while it might look fairly good, you know, sort of smart, it's um, not worth a cold pie if it doesn't go. So let's see what happens, tubers. Well, that's about it for this one, tubers. Uh, that's a tidy up of the little JA Prestwich 2A. <coughs> Pardon me, we've got about four more engines sitting out in the shed that we're going to do up. So uh, we might do a BSA next time. I've got a little old BSA out there uh, that's in similar condition. Uh, we might clean that up and see how we go. I'd like to have a better result next time I'm um, trying to pay attention to detail and little bits and pieces I want to improve a lot on the powder coating side of things uh, but we shall see what happens but uh, yeah look forward to talking to you when we start the next one tubers take care have fun keep away from the virus people